What's up guys, it's Project back with another one. Now that we know we're getting an update announcement on the 27th, I figured I'd give you guys some great DPS hammer builds to mow down the new content with. Since hammer is special to me, this time you get four. That's right, four builds with relatively easy to get charms so you can bonk Camellios and the rest of them to death. Well, I would have said capture, you know, cause randoms. But elders and apexes can't be captured. So death it is. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> If you're new to Hammer, I got a combo guide, so go watch that in the end screen annotations to learn to bonk the right way. And with that out of the way, build all, start all! Let's hop right into it with the most commonly used one, Big PP Bonker. This is the best overall Hammer build, hands down, and why many speedrunners use it. Narga Hammer out DPSs everything due to its high affinity and white sharpness. For Rampage skill, get the attack boost level 3 one. For charm, any 2 level 2 slot or 3 2 1 slot charm will work. And min maxing with a better charm is easy. Pretty much a single wex or attack level 1, 2, or 3 with level 2 slots gets you full attack level 7, level 3 wex, level 3 crit boost, and max speed sharpening. Flinch free level 1 so those pesky longsword users don't poke your asshole while trying to hit the head, and well, that's pretty much all the hammer needs for a DPS build. I get Slugger as a bonus due to my charm, which is a change you could consider if you want a more comfy skill in exchange for losing some power. But I don't think Slugger is all that great to be honest. You might get one extra KO in solo with level 3, but meh. It sacrifices a bit too much by being a level 2 slot skill. Now what is worth considering is Stamina Thief. These are level 1s and boy do they make a difference. Highly recommended and most of the other builds will incorporate them. If you only play solo, you can ditch Finch Free for level 2 Stamina Thief. But yeah, that's the meta hammer build. From here on, all the other builds are a little bit weaker. But some can actually outperform Narga, although they can't outperform it for long if you don't have affinity up in some other way. Like a hunting horn user, cutter bugs, or the fish thingies from the ice area. But still, they are viable alternatives if you want to change things up. Before I move on though, I did use this weapon damage calc to justify some of the other options. The calculator will be linked in the description if you want to toy around with it as well, but Narga sits pretty at E417 with my build, 426 if you get attack level 7, in white sharpness, which is almost always up due to having speed sharpening level 3. So with that info, enter the second build. That's right, something you probably haven't even considered. It's the Soapy Bonker, featuring Mizu's hammer, with the Rampage skill Attack Boost 2. Turns out, with two levels of Handicraft, you get around the same sharpness as Narga's, trading 20% affinity for 20 more raw. With a God God Charm? This is the best hammer in the game currently. But unfortunately, getting that charm is unrealistic. So you'll have to settle for my build with a Wimpy Wex level 1, double level 1 slot charm which gets attack level 5 and crit boost 2 as well as handicraft level 2 to reach a comfortable white sharpness similar to Narg's and mostly similar stats as the prior build. But this time, I can max stamina thief out for more exhaust hits. Exhaust damage makes the monster tired faster and they'll flinch more to attacks with a green vomit like drool when you hit them. With the latent power and hitting a weak spot, which heads are almost always weak spots, you get 80% crit which is really good for consistent damage. The elemental is kind of whatever, it helps against some monsters, but as far as jewels, I opted them out for Stamina Thief. Going back to the calc, you can see, despite missing 2 attack levels and 1 crit boost, it already out damages Narg. Unfortunately for water, there's not many monsters weak to it at the moment, with high 25 or more hit zones on the head. But still, it should perform better against things like Anjanaf and Toby, and possibly Magnamalo as well. Again, Narg's consistency will make it a better build, but I think Mizu is a serious contender for number 2 spot. Moving on to build 3, again, another one under the radar, it's the electric slide bonk. Similar to Mizu, Xenogres reaches white sharpness. So in case it's not obvious by now, any weapon that can reach white sharpness in 3 or less handicrafts is likely one of the top 3 weapons. Turns out a 1.32 multiplier is OP, and I know you might be thinking, what about Bolchner Poir? I'll discuss that in the end. But yeah, Zenogre loses 20% affinity compared to Mizu, but gets 10 more raw and a unique rampage skill with anti-aquatic exploit, which increases damage some 10% against fishymons like Mizu, Moldron, Avasyoff, Ludroff, etc. Unfortunately though, not many of them are weak to thunder, 
But like I said, the elemental factor is very non-existent for Hammer, but even without that, this build should outperform Narga damage-wise against those monsters with that skill equipped. Because Zin has less crit and needs Handicraft level 3 for a comfortable amount of white, I had to give up crit boost. But still, attack level 7 and max wex leads to some good damage output still, given my charm has Evade Extender and a useless rapid morph. However, I will say, Evade Extender on Hammer, even level 1, is a game changer. I don't know, it feels really good to have it on Hammer. Not only boosting your rolls, but also your blue to yellow form short dodge distance as well, making this build great against Tigrex, which has a 25 hit zone weak to Thunder, if you go the attack boost route level 2 for Rampage instead of anti-aquatic. For Calx, here they are again, it outdamages Narg, but this is the generic damage, which kinda blows up Elemental, so if you set it to a monster as the target, the damage changes. Still, it nearly matches Narga when you have latent power level 1 up. And out of curiosity, I did a test in-game between Narga and Zin, and Zin does more damage with the same exact effects. But with only 60% crit at best overall, it'll be a worse weapon. But it looks cooler than Narg, it builds electricity when you charge it, and it still probably out DPSs against Watermons with the anti-aquatic, so yeah, give it a shot. And last build is Ice with Gauze Banger. Yep, Narg is the only pure raw build in this video. <laughs> So yeah, Gaz, Oonga Boonga, me smash, you know crit half the time, but when it does crit, it deals some nasty damage. Brutal Strike sucks, never use it. If the weapon has the ability to crit at 50% or higher, you should always go crit. So for Rampage skill, get Attack Boost 2 from Basarios Tree. You have to upgrade from Basarios in order to get it. So if you forge the Gauze Hammer already from the Gauze starting point, you'll have to start a new one from the beginning of the tree, get to Basarios, equip the attack boost rampage skill to Basarios, and once you upgrade to Gauze, the Gauze hammer will retain that attack boost. Now Gauze, I had to change the build up and get Handicraft level 1. The base boost sharpness is too little. I tried it against Rajang, it doesn't feel good, and going from blue to green is not the same as going from white to blue like the others. It's way worse, so the extra bit of blue will help maintain DPS up more. So this is min max for the charm at hand. This has the same evade extender charm as Zin's, and I like it a lot here for Rajang, which has a 30 week hit zone to ice. The evasion makes it almost impossible to get grabbed as you can just dodge behind him or avoid Diablo's attacks with ease. So, the cases where you would use Gauze Hammer over Narg's is against Ice Weak Mons. Although this still loses to Narg at DPS, but still, it is something else to use. And those are the meta Hammer builds, going by DPS. Why no Bludgeoner builds? This is why. Atlas Hammer. Yikes. Big yikes. A huge DPS loss when Narga is in white, and even if it reaches blue, it still gets out damaged. People say Bludgeoner is more comfy, but it's not. It's not with this setup here, which will require a Bludgeoner, Attack, Wex, or Crit Boost level 2 charm with a level 2 slot, yet it'll still underperform compared to my non-max Narga build, especially in white. The same would echo for the Gargoyle Meme Hammer, which is worse than Atlas, so poor egg users. It was not meant to be. Atlas is ugly anyway, so honestly, just use the builds offered here over Bludgeoner builds. Charge Blade and Gun Lance are the only weapons that make sense with Bludgeoner builds, and this is not even factoring you need to get Mind's Eye as well for Hammer to not bounce off certain parts, which is only going to get worse as new, more powerful monsters start rolling in. So yeah, hope I shed some light on some hidden hitters for you to toy around with before the content drop next week. If you liked the video, bonk that like button. As for question of the day, what monster or monsters do you think will be revealed on Tuesday's event? Let me know in the comments below. I personally think Basil has a high chance, and of course Tio and Kush as well to complete the trio of elders with Kami. Hopefully Apex Wrath gives Wrath weapons an upgrade as well would be sick, cause right now, Apex monsters are pretty much useless. So yeah, we're almost there guys. Endgame will finally have more life. <sighs> but yeah, that's it from me. Go check out my other build videos, weapon guides, and subscribe and hit that stupid annoying bell icon, otherwise you don't get notifications, for more Rise Epicness.